Now, this is what a normal testis looks like under a microscope. You see that cell wall, it's nice and pink, There's a, and that's the nucleus, okay? It's, that's a healthy cell. We've done research in many different laboratories around the world, which are um, like the Cleveland Clinic, and they show that when you expose normal cells of the testis to cell phone radiation in animals, and you evaluate what happens, look at the cell walls right? They start to fragment. They become, if you look at the difference between the controls and the exposed here, you can see how the controls have boundaries between them. You see the white space, all right? And you see on the exposed, you've lost a lot of that white space. Why is that? The, mem the membranes have broken down. The membranes that protect the cells are broken down. And this is, in mice, exposed for just two hours a day for a month. Now, that understand that mice live two years, so that's equivalent to a, a several years' exposure for a human, all right? But the fact of the matter is, this is a very profound demonstration of what may be going on, why infertility is increasing in men. There are many different factors that can account for infertility, including exposure to solvents and pesticides and other agents. But men today have half the sperm count that their grandfathers had. That is a fact. That has been established and published in the peer-reviewed literature. And I've written several articles about that and speculated about causes. Cell phone radiation now is an additional cause, and that is why the Cleveland Clinic advises men who have fertility problems to get their phones out of their pockets. If you have to carry a phone, put it on airplane mode so that it's not sending or receiving microwave radiation. Now, laptops. They're not called laptops anymore. They're called tablets. This study was done without heat. So they, created, they had a laptop that did not produce heat. And this is the sperm damage from the exposure for four hours, okay? The controls have on the left show DNA damage um, you see the black, that's the DNA damage in the exposed. And this is again a peer-reviewed published study and all of this and more is available on our website. This is a study done by the director of the National Institute of Drug Abuse. She took men uh, with, and put a headset on them with two phones on it. The phone was either turned on or not. They didn't know if it was turned on and there was no music or no sound, nothing, just on. And what happens when a phone is on? It's smart. And it's going, where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. It's called a handshake. And it's doing that 900 times a minute. So that's, just, that's the way they're programmed. When they did a PET scan, which this woman, Nora Volkov, has pioneered in developing PET scans, they showed an increase in glucose in that part of the brain that was most exposed, right there where the arrow is. The red is the increase in glucose right in the area that would have been most exposed with Keith Phillips, who died of that brain cancer. His brain cancer was exactly where he used to hold his phone, exactly under his phone. And the way they were able to peel it off his brain the first surgery. He wasn't so lucky after that.